prospects, a part of an MLB team that is basically there to build your future players and hopefully turn out to become all-stars. Every year, MLB does a ranking of the top 100 MLB prospects. In today's video, we're going back in time, in 2017. Here is a list of the top 100 prospects in baseball that year. You can pause the video as I scroll. Now what we're really focusing on today is the top 10 prospects from that year. How did these guys turn out? Are they now known as an all-star or did they not live up to the hype? How is everybody doing today? It's Sports Hollow back with another video and today we're going to take a look at the top 10 prospects from the 2017 MLB season and how did these guys turn out and where are they now? Let's not waste any time and let's get straight into it. Starting off at number 10 with Austin Meadows. Now back in 2017, Meadows was still playing in Pittsburgh for the Pirates. He seemed like a pretty good prospect as in 2016, he had a 266 batting average with 12 home runs and 47 RBIs. Being ranked 10th may have seemed a bit too high, but seeing how Meadows did in the majors in some ways makes up for it. Meadows would be traded to the Tampa Bay Rays in 2018, and he would go off. In 2019, he had a 291 batting average with 33 home runs and 91 RBIs with 154 hits. Meadows would play well in 2021 as well. The only problem was his batting average was down to 234. Besides that, he had 27 home runs and had 106 RBIs. As of right now, Meadows is now playing in Detroit putting up decent numbers. So it's safe to say Meadows' career has gone well so far. He's still young at 27 years old, which means he has time to improve on the weaker parts of his game. We'll see what the future holds. Coming in at number 9 is Tyler Glasnow, the second Pittsburgh Pirate in the top 10, and the second one to get traded. Yikes, Pittsburgh. Anyways, Glasnow seemed like he had a bright future. In 2017, in AAA, he went 9-2 with a 1.93 ERA and 140 strikeouts in 15 starts. He played extremely well until he got that call up to the major leagues. This is where we saw the worst side of him. In his major league debut, he won 5 innings and gave up 4 earned runs with 2 walks and a home run. There have definitely been worse debuts, but I mean still, this isn't great. So obviously Pittsburgh decided it was only right to trade him and Meadows for Chris Archer. And we all know how that turned out. Archer went on to become Glasnow 2.0. But Tyler would improve after leaving Pittsburgh. 2019 so far has been the greatest season of his career as in 12 starts. He went 6-1 with a 1.780 ERA and 76 strikeouts. Glasnow's pitches were unstoppable that season. Especially that fastball that could go up to 100 miles per hour. Now Glasnow will unfortunately miss the 2022 MLB season due to Tommy John surgery, but his career has seemed very promising so far. We'll see how far it could go and if he can potentially become a Cy Young Award winner. Coming in at number 8 is Victor Robles. Taking a closer look at Robles' game, he is a man who hits for average and has a ton of speed. He's the perfect leadoff hitter. He plays for the Washington Nationals and taking a look at his MLB career, there are some promising parts. 2019 was his breakout season as he had a 255 batting average with 17 home runs and 65 RBIs. He also stole 28 bases that season. That was a good season, but after that, it's kind of been downhill. In 2021, he only played 107 games and had a 207 batting average with 2 home runs, 19 RBIs, and just 8 stolen bases. Robles was not playing the same at all. Taking a look at him right now, he's 25 and has had a slow start to the 2022 season. Just like Meadows though, Robles is still a very young ball player, meaning he still has time to fix his game. We've seen the best version of him before, but will we see it again? Coming in at number 7 is JP Crawford. Crawford was drafted 16th overall in the first round of the 2013 MLB Draft by the Philadelphia Phillies. Crawford was putting up okay stats in the minors, but it was better than the average AAA prospect. When he got called up to the major leagues, he was not playing very well. Even though it was 72 games in total, the Phillies didn't want him anymore. In December of 2018, the Phillies traded Crawford to the Seattle Mariners, and this is where we got to see the good side of JP Crawford. 2019 was Crawford's quote unquote breakout year as he had a 255 batting average which was higher than his previous seasons. The part of Crawford's game that was the best was his defense. He won a gold glove in 2019 and he deserved it. In 2021, Crawford was finally given the chance to play a full season. 
and he proved a lot of good things having a 273 batting average with 9 home runs and 54 RBIs. Crawford may have not seemed like the type of hitter you always want, but there are times he can be very helpful. This season seems like he's improving even more, so maybe Crawford's game will keep going up. Coming in at number 6 is Alex Reyes. Reyes seemed like a prospect who had a lot of good stuff to prove. In 2016 with the St. Louis Cardinals, he went 4-1 with a 1.57 ERA and 52 strikeouts. Seeing him play like this seems very promising, right? Well, Reyes' only problem is injuries. That explains why he missed 2017 and barely played in 2018 and 19. Reyes bounced back during the pandemic season in 2020 though, 3-1 with a 3.20 ERA and 27 strikeouts. But 2021 has by far been his best season as he became an all-star. He went from a starting pitcher to a dominant relief pitcher. Unfortunately, Reyes has returned to the 60-day IL and he had to undergo soldier surgery in March. We'll see how he looks after his recovery. Coming in at number 5 is Ahmed Rosario. Yet another prospect who's perfect at being a leadoff hitter. Rosario's biggest strengths are speed and fielding, kind of like Crawford. Sort of like the other prospects, Rosario's career was looking good in 2019. A 287 batting average with 15 home runs and 72 RBIs while stealing 19 bases. Rosario would be traded to the Cleveland Guardians in 2021, and as of right now, he isn't doing too bad. Rosario could definitely be a killer as a leadoff hitter. The question is, is he capable of being consistent with it? Coming in at number 4 is Dansby Swanson. This is where we start getting into the good stuff. If you were to ask a Braves fan back in 2017 who they believed would be their future star, they would 100% say Dansby Swanson. The man did seem like a future star in the minors, but I don't think people expected for him to turn out this good. Swanson had a very good year in 2020 as he had a 274 batting average with 10 home runs and 35 RBIs. He placed 18th in MVP voting that season. Swanson is a huge piece for the Atlanta Braves and seeing how he played in 2021 where he added more power by nearly hitting 30 home runs and having nearly 100 RBIs, I think Swanson will remain a starter in Atlanta for many years to come. He helped out the Braves in so many ways to win that championship. Coming in at number 3 is Glaber Torres. Now I think we can all agree at some point we thought Torres would have been the next big thing, and he was going right down that path at the beginning of his career. He was an all-star in his rookie season and placed third in rookie of the year voting. Torres had a 271 batting average with 24 home runs and 77 RBIs. He was on fire, and 2019 was even better. A 278 batting average with 38 home runs and 90 RBIs. Torres was an all-star once again and placed 17th in MVP voting. That's the Glaber Torres that was a top 10 shortstop in baseball, but once the pandemic hit, he started to decrease a ton. Torres lost all of his power and his game completely changed, but it seems like he's returning to his normal self as he hit 12 home runs in 54 games so far this season. Let's see if the Yankees can have that old stud back. Coming in at number 2 is Yohan Moncada. Here's another infielder who had a great start to their career. Moncada used to play in Boston but was traded in 2016. When Moncada started his career, he wasn't bad. The only problem was the fact that he struck out a ton. Like a scary amount. 217 strikeouts is way too many for an individual. But the very next season, so 2019, Moncada made up for those mistakes and balled out. A 315 batting average with 25 home runs and 79 RBIs. As of right now, Moncada hasn't had the greatest start to 2022, but he's only played in 25 games. He has plenty of time to improve. And coming in at number 1 is Andrew Benintendi. This is a prospect the Red Sox had a lot of faith in as he seemed like a future stud in the league. He was balling out in the minors which is why he only played there for 2 seasons. When Benintendi played in Boston, he was good. Really good. In 2017, he was second for Rookie of the Year, putting up a 271 batting average with 20 home runs, 90 RBIs, and 20 stolen bases. Benintendi's time in Boston was short but worth it. The 27-year-old was traded in 2021 to the Kansas City Royals. His performance has remained consistent, which means he's still looked at as a good ball player. 2022 should be yet another good season for him. 
So out of these 10 prospects I just named, which one do you think has had the best career so far? Let me know down in the comments, as that is going to be it for today's video guys. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. I'm out.